Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are going to be taking a look at the FASA Asteroid Mod. Now, if you've watched my videos for a bit, you may have noticed this save game up at the top here on some of the videos, and that's because I've been meaning to make a video about this for a little while now. I saw this mod about a month ago and have been playing around with it, and it is just glorious. And once again, it is the FASA Asteroid Mod, and it was made by a user, Frizzank, or Frizzonk, I'm not entirely sure how you say that, but what it does is that it adds asteroids into the game. Now, not like the various uh, planet factory things, it's not like that. They're actually parts that you find under science. There we go, I thought it was utility there for a moment, but no, we get these seven asteroids here under science that are a 100 meter gravity asteroid, a 20 meter asteroid, a 200 gravity potato asteroid, a 5 meter asteroid, a 15 meter ice asteroid, a 300 meter gravity asteroid, and finally a 60 meter gravity asteroid. Now you may be wondering why do some of them say gravity and why do some, such as the 20 meter or the 5 meter, uh, don't. And that's because uh, these ones that have gravity in the name, which is honestly most of them, it's five out of the seven, only two of them don't have gravity, uh, these have a hacked gravity coding in there for them in the configuration file for these that allows you to actually land your crafts on them. So you can build a little lander and go and uh, land on, say, this 200 meter potato asteroid. And uh, now it is a little wonky, admittedly, it's uh, not foolproof, it is basically a hack of the game. Uh, so it'll work with your crafts, but only in 1x time. If you do any time acceleration, it will throw everything into just chaos. And it also doesn't work with your Kerbal, so you can't stand on the asteroid, you can just land on it with ships. Uh, but yes, these... Wonderful little asteroids get added into the game and say this small little five meter one y You can use this by as a normal part, you know It's got the attachment points on either side and you know if you want you can strap stuff right onto them. It works just fine and It comes in all these various sizes that well make life a little difficult as you can see for this one Moving to the 20 meter we actually have to zoom out a bit to actually see the asteroid and that only becomes a more and more of an issue as you go up in size as you can already tell here this 20 meter asteroid is already taking up a large portion of the vehicle assembly building but say you go up to well just this 60 meter one right here and we've got to zoom way out to do anything with it and it's <laughs> basically fit to burst for the vehicle assembly building. Anything above the 60 meter asteroid becomes kind of a pain. The 200 and 300 are basically unusable in the VAB. So if say we put in this 300 one, we've got to go all the way up to the ceiling and then zoom out and you still can't see it. <laughs> so that definitely is a problem if you want to work with the 300 one, but the 200 meter one is essentially the limit of viewable space that you have in here. Oh, though, I stand corrected. I could have sworn you could see the 200 inside the VAB, but no, that is that one is off limits as well, pretty much. Now, you still can use them. You just can't build on them. So say with this 100 meter one, if we zoom out here, you know, you have some buildable space Though, to launch something like this into space, you are going to probably have to use Hyper Edit unless you are a wizard with rockets. But yeah, yeah, even with these large ones, you can attach stuff onto them and build on these asteroids from the vehicle assembly building or, of course, the space plane hangar and then get them into orbit however you may want to do it. Now, if you are going to use a rocket, I would suggest the largest one be this 60 meter gravity ice asteroid because, well, that's kind of crazy to go with the 100 meter for that. Plus, this is a more regular shape. Now, if we actually leave the VAB without saving anything, 
we actually have a few of these asteroids already up in orbit. Now this FASA asteroid save game comes with the mod, so they have this whole lineup of asteroids that are already out in space. So say we want to go to this uh, 15 meter ice asteroid here, we can just easily go and do that. And as you can see, things have been built on this one. Now these are asteroids, once again, that are built in, or not built in, but are in a save file that comes with the mod, so that you can see these things in action and see what you can do with them. And you have a docking port right here, so if you want to send a mission out to this asteroid, you can, and uh, come in and dock with it. But uh, if you don't want to dock, you can always build on them. As you can see, we've got this lovely antenna here. Now there are some pretty cool builds on some of these asteroids. I'm trying to remember which one is my favorite right now. If we go back to the uh, tracking station. This uh, 60 meter ice asteroid around the moon, I believe has promise. As it is one of the larger ones. Ah, yes, this is, I, this is my favorite one of them, because not only did they build on it with other materials? So you've got the large docking port here, you've got a fuel tank, you've cut a whole load of uh, the nuclear reactors and batteries, but you actually have some of these 5 meter asteroids thrown into the mix. Just so you have some, uh, basically some more terrain to this. It's not just this round asteroid, you've also got these little bits and bobs thrown in as well. And if we head back to the space center, and then back to the uh, tracking station. We can take a look at one of these asteroids that I've put up. Now, these 200 and 300 meter asteroids, they do have some stuff built on them. Uh, which actually, yeah, let's go to this 300 meter one just to see how large uh, this baby is. I mean, we got to zoom all the way out here. And it's just massive. Now, this one doesn't have any structures built onto it. It does have a few of these smaller asteroids attached to it, but no, like, construction on it, like no docking ports or anything of that ilk. Uh, but yeah, this thing is just massive. It is, well, 300 meters total. It is just ginormous and so wonderful. And if you could actually even build a single docking port onto it, it would be quite a fun addition to just throw one of those up into space to try to dock with it. Now, I've got two asteroids that I've put together. Both are 60 meter asteroids. And if we go to this one, this is the FASA base that I got into orbit using HyperEdit. That is my attempt at doing a little construction on one of these and putting it up into orbit. Now, like I said, I used HyperEdit to get this thing into space because, well, it's huge. Oh no, I'm wrong on this one. This was the 200 meter potato uh, asteroid. I thought it was the 60 meter. But oh yeah, we built. I built this little base on here that has uh, John Lee Kerman in there. And he's got a lovely little base with some nice lighting. Let's uh, actually bring that up. And we could get him out on IVA, or EVA rather. But, like I said, with the EVA, actually, yes, let's just go and do that. Oh my, oh my, there we go, gotta roll around the camera. We actually can just walk down this ladder, and like I said, these asteroids do have a hacked gravity on them, but it doesn't work for the Kerbals, so see, he just goes right into floating around, so we have to turn on our RCS pack so that he can actually <laughs> move it with any semblance of, you know, some sort of control. Uh, but nonetheless, we have a nice little structure that we've been able to build here on this asteroid. Oh my, must zoom out again. And that could be quite a cool thing. You know, you could build a small little facility and have a few docking ports on it and RP yourself uh, taking supplies to that asteroid. Which, you know, adds a whole new degree of difficulty. You have this giant asteroid, which is not entirely stable, slightly rolling around, that you have to dock with to get some supplies to. Could be quite interesting. And it is just fun building on these asteroids. I mean, this was a quick, really stupid, easy little build that I did. But nonetheless, it's quite interesting and quite fun having 
any sort of construction on an asteroid, even though the asteroid is a part on its own. Now, if we go to the other asteroid that I have, I probably could have switched in the map in there because they were quite close to one another. But just for safety's sake, let's roll down to this lander test. Now, like I said, with the gravity, it doesn't work for Kerbals, but it does work for landers. So, if we... Ooh, this... I wish this was in a little bit more light, so we are going to do a little fast forwarding. And now these are linked to the asteroid at the moment, so time warping is perfectly acceptable. You can just do it to your heart's content because these are, well, bolted onto the asteroid. I mean, it's on there with a few good old fashioned struts. And if we go back to 1X, control from the probe core that I have here. Now I've got a little lander can and then a probe on top. And if we just release that, there we go. We have a little robotic RCS probe that we can. Let's get a hold of my controls here for a moment. There we go. Go to docking controls. Now, if we float away, we float away just like we would with any ship. But with a landing on it, let's bring down the landing gear. We can actually take this small little lander and whoop, keep it going. Almost, almost. Don't want to crash by going too quick. And we've got a uh, touchdown. Yes, touchdown. There we are. <laughs> we are landed on this asteroid. Now, as you can see, it kind of clips through the quote-unquote terrain of the asteroid a bit, but it is actually landed on the asteroid. It is there and stable, and that is quite cool. I like the idea of that, that it's a part that's huge that has its own gravitational pull. Now, you can't actually orbit these. I, I don't think that that is possible in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but it has that, as I said, a hacked version of gravity that just allows you to land things on it. But your Kerbals won't walk on it or anything like that. You can just land your probe and call it a day. Now, like I said, with the time acceleration, uh, that's screwy, so if we... Whoop. Oh, so we can't even... Oh, it's throttled up. Why is it thr... Oh, whoops. I forgot I'm in the docking mode, and that... <laughs> that didn't work out so well. So let's land it again, go back into that mode. I don't know why it's throttled up. And we are floating away a bit here. So... Down. Yeah, it's not actually sticking very well to it this time around. It was sticking quite nicely to it, but I think because of the rotation, it's going a little wonky. That and I th actually think the RCS is pulling it. But nonetheless, if we time accelerate, like I said, doesn't work. <laughs> Even when you are technically landed on one of these things, uh, if you time accelerate, it doesn't notice that it is attached to anything. Now, if we go back to the vehicle assembly building, I do want to go over one weird little bug that gets me a bit on this. Now, if we grab... Hmm. Why did I go through all of them? If we just grab the 60 meter asteroid there, you'll notice it has room for a crew. But if you actually send it out into space, you can't actually view the crew. You can't do anything with it. So if you don't think about it and you just drop in one of these asteroids and launch, there goes three of your crew that essentially you can never get back ever again. That is a odd thing, but I noticed it before because I had a whole crew list and I was sending up a couple of these asteroids for tests and then these three are all I have left now because <laughs> I've got crew stuck in those asteroids that are currently up in space 
but I can't touch those crew ever again. They are stuck there. You can't see their portrait. You can't use key commands to go to their views or anything like that. They are, for all intents and purposes, are they just don't exist anymore. It's, it's a little bit of an odd bug. I don't know why <laughs> these have parts for crew, but if you actually look at them, they not only have that, they've also got some built-in RCS, uh, liquid fuel, monopropellant, oxidizer, they've even got xenon gas. I don't know why it has all of these things, but it does. It's, it's a little weird, and it has a crew capacity, and it's... Just watch for that. If you download this mod and start building some asteroids to send out into space, just make sure it's not crewed, or if it is crewed, that you only have the crew in the particular lander part that you're using. So say we go to the FASA base that I built, we go to this design. Oh yes, another small tip if you do download it, launch your asteroid like this, because since, like I said, I used hyper edit, and if I just have this asteroid rolling on the ground, it rolls, all the parts fall off and explode. So I have these uh, la or launch stabilizers there, and they hold on to it. I hit space and then hyper edit it up. But if we actually we don't need to do that, we can just look at the crew here. I actually have to manually put the crew member in the cupola or cupola module that I have, and take out these other guys so that I, they don't just sit in those three spots and never to be used again. It's a bit of an odd bug, but uh, it's something you just gotta live with with this mod, and uh, just make sure you remember that so you don't lose Kerbals. Uh, but yeah, that is going to be it for this episode. Uh, just a quick little mod look. I hope you have enjoyed it, and if you would like to take, take a look at this mod for yourself, you can follow the links in the description to go and download it either on the forums or on the Kerbal Spaceport. And yeah, i definitely say to give it a go. It is quite a fun mod to be able to uh, have asteroids that you can build with, land on. It's quite a cool ad addition to the game that I definitely suggest you give a go. But yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this episode, and of course that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.